Let's do a case study of cardboard prototyping. I propose a hands-free phone holder for watching movies. I've got my phone. It's a, an iPhone 8. Um, and it's small by, I think, some standards now. These phones are getting quite large, but this is not small overall. Because time is short, I'm going to suggest that we use this design. Um, this is what, we, what would be a side bracket, and um, just a, as a prelude, here's a piece of uh, cardboard that's already in that shape, and uh, it's just it's going to be one of the legs of the uh, of the um, bracket. It, this is what's going to hold up the phone. I've got some cardboard here. This was the lid of a, a shipping box, and uh, I got my square here. One of the first things you want to do is make sure that it's indeed square. So I could use the grid on my um, my cutting board and see that it's not quite square here. This this dips down here. So life will be easier if we start with square pieces. And I'm going to clean this up. I've got my knife and I don't need to push it out, the blade out all the way. And I'm going to make several cuts. Also notice that it's a little short here. So we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So I want to make some light cuts. I'm not pressing that hard. I'm, I'm pressing hard with my left hand to hold the piece, but not hard with my right hand. I've got a sharp blade, a new sharp blade. So now what do I do? I'm at the end of this. Now I could pick it up and relocate it, but if I keep the blade secure here and I just slide the straight edge down a little bit, I can keep the straight edge straight up here. And I haven't moved it here because this is where the knife is providing my reference. And I clean it up like that. So. Now I have what I believe is a nice right angle corner here as a reference. I'm going to flip this over. I have my square corner nice and tight. Measure twice, cut once. And I'm going to transfer this design onto here. And I'll use my, my rulers here. I'm three inches. That's the overall width. I've got in here, I've got a half an inch. So what I'm doing actually is making two lines or two, two measurements so that I can uh, then find that line there. I'm doing somewhat light, light traces here so I can have these reference lines. I want to have this point, the, the low point here, one inch from the base. So I'll measure up one inch. So there's a question about measurements. So at the end here, should I, should I scroll, score along the edge? So the other way to do this is to make this flush here. And then I'll make one inch there. And I'll come back over here and one inch here and draw a line here. I realize my head may be getting in the way. So there's the one inch reference line. And I've got a half inch line over here. And I want to make a 45 degree angle. I also want to come in at least a quarter inch from this edge. So the, um, this is there. So I can use my protractor here to try to figure out where the zero of this, the low part here is, and intersecting 45 degrees that way. But I also am going to need to go 45 degrees this way. So um, I'm going to mostly just eyeball this, call that in a quarter of an inch or so. And I'm going to make sure my, my protractor is lined up with that horizontal. And I've got a reference line over here someplace. And I've got this as my zero. I can check to make sure this all worked out using the bottom edge as my reference. And uh, yeah, they line up. So I'm going to strike that line there. And the triangle makes it easy to get the right angle. I just flip it over. And I do that. And where that intersects, now I need a horizontal line. By virtue of the way I constructed this, half an inch in from this edge, quarter inch in from that edge, one inch in from the bottom, and a 45 degree angle. And all of those angles 
work out. When you're making your own phone holder, you can eyeball these things too, right? It's not, the, the precision of the first piece is not as important that all the subsequent pieces uh, are good copies of that. I have the outline of the part I want to cut. I've got my knife. I'm going to use this straight edge. Here I just want to work methodically, uh, not pushing too hard. I don't need to have the knife blade out very far. Um, I'm just going to poke a hole here and then slide it down. Just working slowly, methodically, not rushing. I've got my first piece. Now, I could measure, but I don't think that's a good idea. I think it's better to just trace. And uh, I'm not going to use I'm not going to use this as a guide because it would be easy to cut into the cardboard. So, I'm going to trace. Whoops. Trace here and the tracing won't be perfect because the cardboard is a little interfering sometimes. But I'll get the outline. I've finished cutting out my second piece. We've got two pieces here, and these now will form our uh, the two supports to hold up our phone, like this. Okay, so obviously we need something to make this more secure. So I propose that we uh, connect the, these two at the bottom for now. So we'll create a piece across the bottom that joins these two, and then later we can add another piece either on the face or on the back. So the next task is to, th that the next part isn't really designed, but if I'm going to uh, hold these pieces up like this, I can either do it this way or this way out of this board. So let's, let's do it this way. And just to keep things nice, if this is three, why don't we make our base three inches apart? So starting here, we'll Write a line up there as our reference, and from there we'll do three inches. And here we, we want to be square, or I can just move far enough back that uh, the uh, small angle error I might make in tipping this will um, not matter as much. And I'm going to put my two base pieces like this. So the corrugations are up. Also note that the corrugations are going this way, which will also make a stronger joint right here. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I want to cut that. And so one more time, I go three inches <clears throat> out this way, basically just cutting out a, a, a three inch square. Now I have my base and I'm going to align the corrugations, the grain of the corrugations perpendicular to this joint. So I want the corrugations going that way, the, the grain going that way. And now I'm going to cut, I'm going to make one of those recessed cuts where this will be the measure of thickness. I'll hold this here and I can hold this up against it. I'm going to use my longer straight edge. So I, what I want is this to be on top of, but I'm going to cut a little groove out of this material here. So I'll hold this up to guide, and then I'll push my larger straight edge up against it, and I can see uh, whether I have a good thickness there. Whoops, I keep moving. Now I take my blade, and I'm not going to cut all the way through this time. I just want to cut through the top layer and the corrugations. And you can hear the thumping as it crosses the corrugations. And once it's smooth, I stop. And now I can get in here and peel away this material. Um, you can also sometimes use this straight edge as a, a tool to move it. But, um,
So we want to have no, no material left. And what I'm going to do now is put glue onto this joint, into this little recess. Put glue and hold it that way. First though, I have to do the other side. Okay, now I'm ready to glue. I'm going to I'm going to glue these two sides in using this bottom edge to form the the outer surface of that. This is where my um, fixture will come in handy. I'm going to put glue in both of these things both of these uh, little grooves here whoops not being too clean with my gluing i've got a uh, tapered cut on this and i'm using that uh, to fit into the groove there so i'm going to squish this in there i'm going to squish this in there this side and I can then push it up against here to make sure I'm good and tight. Nice and right, and I get my 90 degrees. Now, I could leave it like this, or better yet, I could take a piece of tape on each of these uh, sides and hold, use the tape to hold the joint. So I'll pick it up gently inspecting this back side it's okay that it's squished out there oh. nice nice clean edge right there huh and i will secure this with some tape so this tape is allowing me to push the side piece down and secure so i tape on the bottom first and pull it around i don't have to push too hard but i'm just making sure it's good and squished in there Now we just have to wait, let the glue dry. I've let my piece dry a little bit. It's still um, not finely set, but I can begin fabrication of another piece uh, that I'm going to add to this to finish it up. Now it would be very nice. I've got some scraps here. It'd be very nice to have um, you know a piece that covered up this and made a nice um, surface. It's not necessary because the phone will stay like this. Um, in fact, it'd be really cool to have a surface that wrapped over this, and we can consider that for a more advanced uh, project. Um, but the the structurally, the the uh, support is not strong this way. In other words, it could be. I don't want to move it now because it's, the glue is still setting. But if I push sideways, this would be wobbly. So if I set a brace material across the back. That would s provide a, uh, a rigid corner that would keep these from tipping this way. So I'm going to do that. And I'm not, I don't need to make it, uh, I don't need to fill the hole back here. I could. You know, these are aesthetic choices. Uh, so what I want is another piece that's as wide as this base, which just happens to be that width because I've already cut that out. And perhaps, I don't know, what do you want to call this? Two inches seems like a lot. A one and a half. How about a one and a half inch high piece that will go across that? So we can uh, extend this line here. So this piece will go across the back. And what I'm going to do is cut out those little edge pieces here, like I did before, using um, this is my guide. All right, one more time, using this to provide the edge. So I can now glue this in, and I th this other glue hasn't set completely, but I'm, I'm being um, cautious about not wiggling it too much. And I'll add these two joints, and I'll have a nice secure base. Okay, one more time, I'm going to get um, a couple pieces of tape ready. Not to be big. This could be hot glue as well. 
Um, now, maybe I want it to be perfectly flush with the top, in which case I could use my cutting board as my reference here. I'll use my fixture. Okay, I've got um, this, glue, this nice, this glue is pretty nice and tacky. So I'm going to secure it again. I'm starting from the back side and I want to push it that way. So I get that secure and I slightly push against this, making sure the corner is nice and snug. And now I wait. We have a we have a phone holder.